Good evening. My name is Christy Vallier, and I'm an assistant professor of architecture and the chair of this semester's Knowlton School Balmer Lecture Series entitled Twist. A twist tactically combines and interwines design methods, disparate fields, and physical matter. It is a dynam it's dynamic and implies fitness. The lectures so far in this series have included innovators that demand an expanded reach. They maintain a stance within one discipline with a deliberate movement and connection towards another. Our lecture tonight will again twist beyond disciplinary bounds to discuss the relationship of architecture and painting in relation to flatness, fantasy, and novel materiality. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Elena Manfredini with the lecture entitled Painted Canvas. Elena is an engineer and architect by training, and in 2004, she founded Atelier Manfredini, a Los Angeles-based design office. She has been actively redefining the contemporary design practice by employing an expansive approach, decisively pushing the boundaries, or more accurately, the traje trajectory of the work simmers over to encompass architecture's allies, fashion, product design, and interactive environments. The work provokes an immersive experience, extending architectural effects and expanding audiences. She is a genuine advocate for design excellence, illustrating its ability to shift scales, commingle with other mediums, and have a prominent cultural role. The wide range of work has a bias towards pattern, texture, color, and geometrically intricate surfaces. The surfaces are serious while playing hide and seek. They transcend flatness, and in this way, I believe Elena could be recognized as what Sylvia Lavin defines as a super architect, a producer of work that not only superimpose themselves, but intensify architectural effects. To set the mood for the evening, I can tell you that the projects blossom, fold, pop, billow, and sparkle to fantastical impact. Through the accumulation of calibrated layers and mediums, Elena manipulates the two-dimensional surface, resulting in supple designs that are both bold and delicate. In addition to her international practice, she has taught at SciArc for over a decade and currently serves as the coordinator of the graduate thesis program. I was fortunate to see this work firsthand a year ago, and her direction and clarity of intent is on display. The influence and intensity are palpable. I am not one to list awards, but she has received many. But beyond any single award, I think it is particular to note that the awards recognize her full range of expertise, from innovative research to excellence in teaching, and of course, design. She is a leader of her generation and poised to have a major impact. Please help me welcome Elena Manfredini. Um, we talk about three main topics. 
One is the idea of populism, that we want all to super flat, and then to the idea of super real. And also, we got to some training, I mean, the work I've done when I was younger than that, <laughs> which all happened to all of you when you come out of school, there's some uh, level of ingredients in the work, which then simplify into a trajectory. Um, populism is really the main topic I'm working on right now, and it really wants to talk about the role, the role of populism in architectural representations and trying to claim a pictorial space for architecture, somewhat between fine arts and digital media. And I will really talk about the difference between the blood event and uh, still life as two painting models that might be a very useful as I might be focusing about architecture today. Then I'll talk about super flat. Um, this will talk about the idea about knowing publication and things that you well know, how big nationalities start talking into different realms of obvious architects and how that opens up all of in terms of function and materiality. Um, this portion of the lecture is a reflection on visualization as you know it and our methods of production. And finally, super real, that's maybe the more um, intricate work in many ways where I'm talking about the role between architectural materials, in contemporary practice, and traditional practices. So really the aim of the lecture is not to discuss the way we do painting in architecture. I think painting was supposed to be doing many years ago. The so model came up on this. I think it is not a uh, medium that is interesting and supposedly painting was doing, but in fact, painting survived. So the lecture tonight is not to say whether or not painting is valuable, but is to place um, painting into architecture and to renovate this relationship which I think has something to offer once again. <laughs> also, there is a little bit about um, personal um, agenda, talking about painting and photorealism, to discuss about the renderings and how renderings have been used uh, mainly as commercial tools from architects, is the way in which we talk to clients, is the way in which we talk to the product audience, and then we kind of way to uh, sort of explain the reality in a uh, literal way. So I'm using photorealism in a different way in the work, trying somewhat to cover a new uh, niche for writing that is actually much more as a creative uh, process rather than a final process at the end of a journey, which is the professional journey. So I'm trying somewhat to find a new positioning for writers and photorealism that is actually at the forefront of creativity and not at the end of a process of uh, production and selling of a project. Um, I'm going to start with this slide from John Holmes um, to talk about photorealism and what it meant. Really, the idea of photorealism came to me maybe six years ago when I went to um, Carlson, which is a company in Los Angeles that makes or used to make before all in one project. Um, Jeff Koons uh, sculpture, and I think it was uh, you know, just opened up with Jeff Koons Plato uh, in New York. I thought it was an interesting project. The idea of the project, um, what, what struck me is seeing how uh, crafters were making the Plato sculpture. Up until then, I always saw the painting which you see on your um, right. And for the first time, I saw actually how they were making uh, the sculpture. And there was a small Plato, and I think three or four people trying to reproduce the material part of the paper in the last year. Which, up to the finger breaks now. Clearly, they're not using the paper, it's not speaking, it's a different scale. And I'm thinking, what, what is the meaning of changing scale? And what is the meaning of the value of choosing something that is an hour like the paper, and then we all know? And why um, is that such an important piece of architecture and art sculpture? So the first issue is that we need to take something that everybody knows, which is the scale, somewhat to change the action of the viewer. So he talks about geometrism, the out of scale of an object, which is something that we find in the history of sculpture quite often. And the second thing is the fingerprints, which is the idea of authorship. Somewhat the fact that somebody broke the Play-Doh and these fingerprints are then transferred to a big scale object felt a desire to maintain the idea of the Artist, a gigantic kind of artist carrying the material. So the human imagine that that material is sticking, although the reality is not. And then finally, the old package is about this uh, trust of the audience in the object. 
If you do not have the sense of stickiness, if you don't have a real authorship, if you don't have something that people understand, then you don't engage the audience. The idea of the trust is what quite passes the part of the scale and somehow brings um, the audience into the space of the artist. And I thought that's an important project for more for architects, which is the one of theatricality, which I think is what is at the base of this kind of gigantism artwork. And I started thinking, how do we bring that into architecture of what we can take? And I looked at technology, which is something I do very often. Sometimes technology um, offers a medium towards um, a new way of producing for artworks. And I looked at scanning as a way to start a project. This was six years ago, I was working with um, other computers for a long time. I was on my yeah, in my career. And it made me as artists to work uh, as to abstract models of making. So we draw plans and then we extrude them, uh, we shape them, we cut them, we them. We, we all know the abstraction of John. But then I thought, I would really want to do something different. It's not going to be about modeling, it's not going to be about um, crowd post cutting, it's going to be really about taking something banal and bringing it to the computer. So I started scanning the first time I got done with the finger and realized when you want the fingerprints of the artist. And I realized that that somewhat became an interesting way to start a professional project, which is a lot in the of course. And I started scanning things. I found a lot of work uh, um, with my sister, actually. We scanned a few Italian uh, monuments, so this is a completely story. But I realized how scanning could be used, yes, as a device to collect uh, information, and then how that increasing the way we draw it. This is a so something so that is a little bit acquisition through images. Um, and you see how the differentiation of the windows to essentially is somehow embedded in the facade, and how then the drawing really becomes difficult to make. And you see there are five or six layers of windows, and then the scanning really allows you to create this thing out over this idea of uh, digital. The idea of digital, I think, is what we work with usually is our next, which again, I've done many times, and you will see some of the projects to work with that. But what I want to show. Is this a little fake arrow which is somehow painting itself <coughs> over and over? And so the idea is that we have different ways of understanding drawings, which is large part, and also a way to understand the picture over images. And with that picture, I usually mean a manipulated image. It's a place of the pictorial. The pictures are somewhat new images in the drawings. And in the picture, I mean a three dimensional picture, I mean what is scan is geometry plus uh, texture now. And I give myself the most bad how to give yourself thought. Well, it's, you know, this is difficult to handle. I don't really know if there's an application or protection to something um, yeah. luxurious. I'm one of those signature projects. Well, somehow signature seems interesting because it's a technical exercise, meaning that it's not really about the subject, or maybe in some cases, but in general, it became a pedagogical exercise, meaning painters in front of myself, all these objects, the bottles of banana, the flowers, whatever it is. And the way in which they approach this dimension is more of a stylistic approach. I mean, it's the place where a young artist um, learn how to paint and learn how to get a technique in relationship to um, the master. So I thought this dimension was an interesting part, an interesting moment to start thinking about a different way of um, of working with material that would not be abstract, but in uh, This was a very small project done in Sydney, in Japan, where I started scanning trees. Um, it's a down, uh, a down that I'm not scan the mountain. And then I started working with the idea of painting on top of it, uh, meaning bringing this into the computer as a two dimensional geometry and adding to it a set of um, coloration textures and fantastic part to it. So the idea was really to go into the realistic part of the object, the point of departure, but then it started to create a level of fantasy where the literal would be coming the front and where the audience would enter the theatrical. What does it mean with theatrical? Well, in a way, I think the theater opens up a very important moment, which is the moment that you enter the scene. Huh? Or the possibility of somebody to enter the scene where the theater happens. So you are an audience that somewhat, if you do this is you can step, you can step up and be popular. And that's a very important function, I think, that arts 
this is the pictures to prove the point. Um, and there's a photo of the part in this, and this then became the material part of the um, So this is the first time really there was interaction between the viewer and the picture of man. Um, this is another project we've done for uh, Mocha, the Museum of Contemporary Art. Um, a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago, they um, asked a few architects to the competition, after the 12 architects, they chose three to do uh, three cabinets uh, inside the museum. And at that point, I was looking into uh, moving beyond the dimensionality of uh, the paintings and looking into other brush strokes and how colors get mixed and how then the computer can simulate those products of material mixing off of the uh, chromatic pigments. And I think I want to just uh, give credit to show that um, we're going to be together with one one in Chicago for sure, at SCA, which I participated when I was working uh, for him uh, in helping create the show. So more I think, consciously or unconsciously, a lot of things that I've been working on at that point enter this project in terms of um, the part of the paint uh, through the screamers of uh, oxygen or the also this um, hatching, double hatching to create multiple images at the same time. A lot of those paintings and carving uh, really stuck with me and the idea really was to move this into digital world. Um, I looked at the block case of rocks of paint and the quality of brush strokes and then I transferred them into the computer. So I started with really transferring all the things of brush into the computer and I used them to melt the dimensional object, meaning I would scan flowers and then I would melt the flowers through the computer uh, just with the amount that the brush could do. Um, and start creating this level of this process between the photoristic, the scan, and the abstracted paint. Um, up to the point of the finish of uh, the paint, meaning that you actually see um, the transparency there, the touch, the reflective quality, and how it goes to break at the edges and in place. And I was looking again for the quality of interaction. And I was thinking also that this photorealism is more than photorealism actually. It's almost an illusion because there is an actual reality in these images. Um, really there's a question about what, uh, what's real, what's not, what's fantastic, what is illusionary. And there is everything that's in focus, everything's cleaner. Uh, but I couldn't have the quality of the reality. And the paint pan in the heart of the paint was really used to create the inner line of the pavilion, and, um, which was then printed on the pavilion with inlays of mirrors. So you see there are inlays of mirrors where you see yourself reflected <coughs> the canvas. And it was glossy, and it was glossy on top of it. And again, the idea of the Rosenquist uh, was very clear. It has a way, it has a technique to uh, cross hatch mirror and paint so that you will see reflections of yourself and of the video on the same shot. I mean, the idea was that these were the shadows that uh, the video would create, or so it would take on somewhat that it's on environment. Um, there's strong geometric uh, back home in the project. Um, these are the unfolds of the geometry, the outside unfold and the inside unfold. And these are some of the close ups of the paint. Uh, these are some of the structure that holds the panels. And the panel is on. There's really a lot of Work to create this glossy, super glossy, I can be part of the project, um, which was very really important to me. I'm going to show you now a video of another project I've done that somewhat was a preparation for this one, a bit proof that um, interesting. <laughs>
really I started working with the diplomatics with a much more um, clear agenda. Um, this was a Pacific Design Center designers, which is quite, if you have a great design to us, but I don't know if you have a great design to us. It's an interesting, first of all, I'm reading it, but it's a penny. And I started scanning as I done in the past few years, and I started scanning, scanning panels. And a lot of the work has been to move from the photorealistic to the abstraction of the picture, and how um, that could then start um, sparkle a few ideas about space. I'll show you a little bit of the techniques first. Um, that would uh, work and 
Thank mm-hmm. you. 
And then over to the next phase of the work. Uh, probably, I'd say that the minus one out of ten is maybe finished. And I'm working, I'm showing the work that has been done in between and deals with the idea of flatness. And the idea of how flat is actually quite interesting right now, I think, or I've always been probably very interesting. But one of the interesting parts about flatness is that the mentioning brings together expression, animation, photography, and graphic design. So we have a fine art space that we all feel that we have something to contribute to. I think um, art is clearly work with dimensional art in many ways. Um, and I think my work I try to combine idea of materiality, uh, flatness, and uh, imagined space, and imply that quite a lot. Um, I also think that it's, um, all, all the work you see uh, deals with the idea of either uh, literal flatness or implied flatness in many ways. Um, this is um, a small diagram that tries to show uh, what the relationship is between flatness and uh, implied flatness. Their flatness, here it has other um, things. Cubes, very square windows, into a very square facade, and the idea is that there is a projection of the ideal drawings onto the real shape. Um, whereas in the second part of the diagram, I'm taking the same image, which is the facade, and I am projecting it to part of the projection into a shape, and I start sculpting the shape not part of the, um, to the street probably, but actually sculpting and seeing what happens. Some of the windows change shape, and some of them is mere into lines. But there's always a moment when you can find them. Uh, flatness of the facade. So no matter how complex the shape becomes, since the color projection, there's always a moment where flatness comes back to the drawing. And so the idea was to get together with dimensionality and dimensionality and this idea of optical effects. Uh, and this would be somewhat the project in the next uh, two or three uh, experimentation of that through installations and some actually in their projects. Um, Massive projection is a small um, project I've done for the country in Yanami. And I was working with some pattern, projected pattern, and pattern shapes. And I did a big wall, uh, which is actually a flat wall, where I was um, trying to um, create this presence of two dimensional sculptures that would really uh, become a little dimensional, although in reality it is dimensional. It's basically a little bit of a drop um, for the design of Yanami. And these are some of the drawings. Uh, probably one of the fastest ones that I've done, so it's a little bit more. Um, but we, you know, it's a gigantic palace where we try so much to combine together this large crowd of faces with um, scanned objects and the dimensional graphic. Um, and just to give you a sense, this is the space at the end. It's more or less 80 feet long and I don't remember what kind of feet high, 80 feet high probably. Um, it, it was an exhibition of furniture, some of it was mine actually. And this is how uh, the shape looked like, so it really has a deep uh, feeling to it because of the impact shadows and the pieces, and because of the particular quality of the wallpaper we used to paint on. Uh, it really felt like it's coming off the wall. So the optical effects were really what we were going after this implied dimensionality, and seeing that way, this time actually the dimensional object. So we have projections, it's still part of this idea of the projection problem. The vision in 2015, where uh, again there's a projection plane from the top, uh, there is more of it, more of the grid, and volumes and then get cut out, and therefore show the smearing of these um, cuts uh, through their elevations. So there are three volumes, the simple projection, um, and then it was actually seen signals and lapped. So it was supposed to be uh, furniture and presence in the space. And also there was an idea of flash and how clouds become a way to occupy volumes and then how they start blending with each other. Um, very similar project, Revolution Cat Sire, is a question I did not I was working with the idea of applied dimensionality of a particular cube, um, nine cubes for the nine square grid, which we all are familiar with. Um, the idea was to create a space for, for a bunch of people, and also a garden from this 
school, the weather at this side, we all had this problem of not having a shared space to eat. So I thought what would be actually needed for the rest of the year, throughout the six, five days, is actual place to sit in the shadows. Uh, these are the cubes and how they work. Um, and I got the idea of the garden and start to operate to jump into the realism. And this is a section of the space, um, the plan, the location, the parking lot. And the laying out of the city for immigration, which is the kind of where 1,200 people for thesis, and the lectures, and training, normal use for students. Um, these are uh, structural uh, schemas. The idea was to have a mesh printed on both sides. Uh, also, the idea would be to change the mesh three years. I think at the end of the day, that's the big problem is how to get. So, the idea was to get something actually that was printed enough to change um, three years. Um, and I'm probably going to be right now for uh, Rome, which is my hometown. It's for the university. It's, um, a kindergarten, it's a proposal for the university because the university is now developing a new campus. Um, it's a false facade project where the garden comes to somehow hide uh, the kindergarten with that. Um, so the false facade is here, so there is actually a big space to play on both ends, and then there are um, all the fish roof um, buildings. Uh, we probably have a lot of images here in Bakery around the I was again working with video projection and I was projecting a pattern all through the building, so from the facade to the interiors, the floors uh, to the shopping windows. So that's the building and these stripes go into the space, um, wrap around each surface, um, and enter into the, ground, into the floors. So the patterns. Uh, then go up into uh, the shopping rooms that are then occupied by the products. That's important. Yeah. Very good too. Um, I have a project done for uh, actually a hand. It's a public project uh, for the Uber and Free from Cancer Health Center, which is a, a hospital for people with allergies. And again, I was working with the projections, um, taking the facade stripes. So it's a little bit of a concrete. And it has this, uh, all, uh, this great stripe around it. So I took, I took the little stripe and I moved it into the, into the entry of, of, the, of the space. And these are um, panels, these are panels that have light underneath them, actually above them. So they create um, this uh, ambient This is not the actual drawings. And this is the piece during the night. And this is the um, Drawings go from big scale to small scale. So the same drawing actually has been used many years before. It's a script. Uh, for a few other projects, tables that are done for a very rich Italian company that this is produced, not produced, is a um, cast aluminum table um, in black and white, uh, which really was working with the shadows, um, this cut of ink and um, tattoo. And I'm now working on another project, I've actually been working on this project all the time, 2011. I work in chairs, of chairs, uh, where again I was trying to take some photographic images and make them become women. So that was uh, a lot of struggle actually to get to leave a woman textile at the scale of, of the strip that they use, brush uh, and the So we did a lot of work trying to figure out which kind of uh, woman uh, textiles techniques would work and what amount of colors would really work there. And we came out with understanding that actually a limited amount of, of colors on the long direction and then these moments in the middle one would be the best way to go to start creating this um, faded quality, which I quite like because it gives a sense of relationality to the object, a feature of blackness, um, and really expressing the textiles. And we will see that at the end of the textiles is really very permanent in the 
project is somehow a fixation that any uh, projects that you come to point that goes back um, interest. And this has been trying to get to the plot. And um, this somewhat moved into an understanding of this woman text as being a son. Um, this is not a word, this is my actual wall, but I think I can talk her. And these are some page textiles that I like very much. And these were inspirations that brought me to the idea of the Radio Suit, which is a project of being on the ES Reverend. Uh, weaving is weaving. I'm taking um, this facade, this conceptual project I'm doing for the Art Institute in Chicago. I'm showing you the papers, I'm showing you the project's work. What of this is actually in the show? So, um, I was looking at uh, Chicago for seven years and we were uh, about this woman party of the sun and I started taking the most uh, iconic images from photographers of me as a party in Chicago and scripting them and scripting them not only for themselves but also for uh, other images um, and then reading them dimensional, not b dimensional, sorry, but on four sides. And so now the idea was to challenge the relationship of the sides that give this crazy rationalism between um, the, the way in which it's done from construction and certain truthfulness in, uh, in the project, to the stack, the uh, model of the windows, the movements, and there is actually, I think these are some uh, clear discrepancies in terms of how the movements work, that sometimes are not useful members, uh, but they actually have incredible uh, qualities on the facade themselves. And so for others to be another level, what if there's no relationship anymore between the slabs and the windows? What if then the edges are challenged? Um, and what if um, the sizes of the windows are different from what we see inside or outside skin? Um, and what if the correlation then is part of the name? I'm going to show you the video of, of the script.
I then started working with different pathologists of the great and how the great start performing um, protocol in the house um, to um, compost, to other things, to minimize highlights and so on. So I started like a pathological studies on how different things can occupy um, the facade uh, of the space and start creating this great edges in these alignments and come up with this effect. This is some of the um, drawings I'm going to put to them because there are many. Um, it's, these are the drawings that I'm going to be shown. Um, they have lots of dimensional qualities, some of them. And again, some of the projects have more or less uh, these alignments. So you see uh, the design here. Jumping into the ground, um, sides, or diagonally understanding models and models. Again, textiles are somewhat more or less in the back of the mind. How can they represent a video like that? Um, new facades. Uh, I 
my uh, staff in New York, my office, I was more um, urban about materials. I was an engineer and some more going to architecture, uh, but I had a thing that in order to be really um, progressive, you actually had to change the deal of the material literally to uh, create something new. And so that changed after as well. This was a plan for Nike. I worked with a textile um, engineer from Stanford. Uh, she was working with this product called Macroyat that would change the shape according to the water content of the planet. And so the idea was that uh, I was working on patterns, I was working on design, whereas she was working on the production of the material. Uh, so this is actually a functional part of this project. So uh, that's what her is kind And so I was I was mapping the pieces of the body, and then understanding that when I think of this right, so what this skill is open. So that, that was the idea behind the next skill collection that was produced in the uh, was the main idea. So two layers, one for internet, and then the other one was the Macquarie Art Fabric, which showed laser cuts um, and layers on top of the net. Um, the production was actually more wider than what was the uh, production at the end. Uh, it was lined for um, denims and tennis and shoes, and this became the probably shoes that everybody has seen, the one that cuts in size. That don't have very much in this one because this would tear uh, too much, but you know, that was the original design. Actually, that project not became a project for them. Um, again, when I was working in the first year, I was working, there was really an obsession about uh, moving these patterns from one field to another and seeing what would happen. So I had a lamp that's parted, and so I worked with the list, which is an Italian company, and moved from fabric to uh, stainless steel. Understanding how then stainless steel. The liver cut water jet, this is when that starts affecting um, uh, images, periscopic qualities, and I could have set up a project plan. And I was going up in scale again in 2006, a couple of years, one year afterwards, uh, with a small opinion of that in China for the Beijing Biennale, which was represented in the United States. Um, and I was trying to get this design uh, to a bigger scale, which was actually the scale of architecture. Um, so it's like 18 to 31. And this is the scale of the project. And again, I was working with the layer of structure and the layers of panels um, that we start casting shadows and through the light. Um, Reintegration and turn up in way to the project as well. And the idea that um, script integration should somehow reflect a behavior in terms of structure needs. So I was working with structures and I was working with the building path of, um, in this case, I was in a project as a school to understand how the pattern is taken up or become similar according to the needs. You see the pattern is thicker in the middle of here, edges, and thicker at the top. Uh, this is the unfold of the project, and this is how it comes together. And for the table. So a lot of the work has been done to avoid uh, the relationship between you know, body structure and surface production surface is self-supporting. Uh, the problem that it came out probably which is not the use for And here I think the problem changed and then it really became optical effect. Um, we have a pattern with this optical effect that we do something in front of it, it looks like it's inside. And so that was really the game for me to see how many times and how in different ways you could do certain things, sometimes structure, sometimes not the thing. And the work in a way shifted very much, I think, at this point. I started working with reflection of the optical effects and more and more. This project is going to come back to show you because that's, again, I was working with 3M rated foil, which is really an interesting material simply because it changes the optical quality according to how you look at it, the direction. Um, and so that was the first project I've done, working with facets, uh, facet construct qualities and optical elements. I'm going to go through, because I've really been more than probably I should have, um, some functional projects. Um, these are combined, things that can be combined. Um, this is a function that can be together and with a medium space. And again, this is the optimization of some 
more brings and scales up to a bigger scale project, which is not a competition for uh, the expert development team, um, the pedestrian between the arrival of the plants to the um, departure of the planes, the departure of the terminal. So here again, specimen geometries. There are 12 modules. Um, they uh, start creating stations and times and filter from the light coming through. The next thing is a uh, uh, house project in Switzerland uh, for a family and eight cars. Um, it's on a lake. Uh, it's a 180 degrees views on the lake. Uh, again, you know, so the project has been to create uh, modules that could then be assembled on the facade. Three models will be able to build a house. Um, the layout is simple. There is a day kitchen and living room at the ground uh, floor, and then at the top there are the uh, master bedroom, master bedroom, and a few other bedrooms. And here, large garage. Um, it turned out that um, most of the challenge of the project was really to fit the lights outside because uh, the amount of the press for the energy. They wanted to have this be up to put the best in the standard, which I'm not talking about other than standard in Europe for energy consumption. So to be the most self-sufficient, so most of the work has been done to find a facade so that we would not catch all the light on the day. And take this energy standard, which is now very difficult to do. Um, a lot of the work also has been to maintain the views on the lake, which is what they really wanted to see everywhere in the house. So this is the master bedroom where you can see um, the, the, the landscape everywhere. And then there are this um, shaft going to the um, garage, <coughs> to the garage, bringing up some natural light underneath. Um, most of the most of the was in the same way to try to give the natural amount of exposure. Uh, it turned out that it became less expensive to mold the whole thing together and big pieces rather than modules. So don't pass the module, I mean the most efficient way to go about the sound. When the product is small, I learned my lessons and it's so much work to keep it small by the end it ended up that um drone value engineer is actually cheaper to be do that again more than the job. So these are the vision of the facade. Um, the catering of the facade is the actual shop name. And these are some of the mock-ups. We used um, touch native special cement that connects with um, the value of the pollution and um, creates salt that washes out the rain. So that was a big deal to actually get that material. That will also be very reflective and it work nicely with the lighting just because at some point to actually reach the unity standard, the windows were solar band and so it was actually more like a window for uh, not for a house really, but for an uh, office. That, that, that idea really that's what really we got to actually reach the level they want. In other project in Italy, um, close to the Starata. Uh, the development was a big block of land next to the city center. And so on one end of the city center, on the other end, here are the hill, on the hills. So you have two big major views and access to the site. The problem we want to develop on the market, where's the market? The uh, market, so what has to be? The parking, 80 apartments, which are this five. Buildings here and then a public building. The so public building is a small uh, theater and a very small museum. So this is the international model where you can see the very the project. And again, the idea was to keep those big views to the hills and to the city center on the other side. So those were the um, park. This is the public building. Uh, the formula that takes you around uh, up to and around uh, and looking into uh, public data. 
and so they did that we would also be animated here and we would be able to see the landscape. And so the idea is that the skin opens, that you know, again, the end, that it wraps, that it opens to all the edges, and it's the place is used. So it's really not, it's not perfect. And these are some of the facades for the picture of the, uh, of the housing. So the back of the bottom is the front of the roof. This emphasizes the preparations for the brick step grade, so that you were trying to use the French as a grade to create this uh, sound. Uh, the young project that I have but it's the short because you know, it has a value for my office. It's called Lava Power. We were invited by uh, MAD, so many of you might know him. He invited uh, Jens and Mann, right in my office, to do nine hours around uh, a lake slash. Uh, I guess. Um, and this is a friend's problem, I think, so you know. And so I started working with the idea of the tower, and the idea was the party, and the idea of breaking as a way to engage uh, the grounds, because I was given a task, you know, a person that was given a task on the housing, actually, on a high rise. So the idea was then uh, engage the party, so I did this thing as simple. Uh, there are three levels of units, different sizes, um, a big core, holding the circulation, garage on the ground, and this is how this more or less open is organized, so this the core inside the units, outside in the bathroom is where most of the gymnastics in terms of the world happens. Um, as Christine told you guys before, I am actually an engineer. And so sometimes I have this uh, weakness of looking at structures <laughs> from the point of view of engineering. I worked on this small, small project that's in what you can see on the screen, but <laughs> it's the value that is not visible. Um, that, that is. So I wanted to be able to create an inverted section of the building that is given as a site for the installation. Um, and I want to create a very big model, the very big model. So these are continuous chain that are half from each other is a non-linear project. Problem meaning there's no real way to find the shape unless you have evolved. Uh, I was working with an engineer I grew up with that about algebraic matrix that's what would approximate the shaping of the cut line. Uh, and we use this installation to test as model in the same way as we were using the little sand beds. I picked up a and I asked her to donate it to me 40,000 crystals, and she said yes, which was great. And we started handing them uh, from the city of the Living Museum. It's uh, <coughs> now the very heavy. We had to actually go to the curtains of both the wall to the curtains of the city, actually, to get the old structure attached to it because it was incredibly heavy. Uh, it's 70 meter, 80 meters drop of crystals, a thousand strings. Similar problem in 2008 uh, for um, Sire. This was 26 cabinet cables uh, and pounds on the problem. You can see the space on the bottom below. And really the aim was to uh, work with the preparation of the panels so that you would be able to predict the shape of the cable and shape it. So we did some testing, um, some calculations, and the preparation were according to the way we wanted on each cable. Um, some of it was flat cut, some of it was laser cut, and we created space. The idea was that the space would be uh, played enough in the capture and could have some relationship with it.
their plans and how they work the body. And some of the work that they use from uh, the human body to the uh, pressure. Other parts migrated from one skin to another. This is probably one of the things I've ever done, which was the one that I brought to Nike and other parts afterwards. Um, again, out of the work done here really was uh, instrumental to understand how scenes start working on the body and how flat material and fabric can start without it and how things are then so instrumental to their shape. Uh, this is on the parts so that you can see the work um, and how the integration starts entering the work, how stripping starts entering the work. So this became kind of a case study for me to develop uh, in something painful that I like, um, but really rare techniques that would be important afterwards. And then there is a function, this is called the Dalla Moroso, which is a kind of company for um, um, this is again a kind of fold of patterns that I work with, um, layers of two of them together, and we fold of them together about the eight in this space, and this is the object that we can be seen here. Um, I've been doing all of those for companies and also for my, pra for my practice. Um, this is some of the fabric collection for uh, a company column that produces uh, silk. And we work on textile design for the past few months in my office. This is one of the of public produce um, in silk. A quick few and everything. This is a lot. And this is what I'm actually about to finish in Istanbul for the Design Milan 2014. Again, there is scanning involved. Um, and this is going to be our super saturated coloration. Uh, the problem is for um, Astro in Istanbul. I'm doing a big wall here with floor treatment and solar videos. Uh, these are the, some close-ups of the color. There are scanning fabrics and stripping fabrics, and these guys are starting to occupy the scene. And it's getting very good. Um,